hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's just praise him again in this house. Can we do that? Let's just praise him again in this house. Let's just magnify him again. Mm. No one like you, God. No one like you. No one like you, Father. No one like you. Hallelujah. No one like you, God. No one like you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you, God. I worship you, God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Taking our Bibles this morning, going back to Psalms 99. We were there last week. Same, same portion of Scripture again. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some Bibles will use the word terror. And it really it means he's just, he's awesome. You know, and he dwells between the cherubim. Let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king's strength also loves justice. You have established equity. You, are, you have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He's holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies and the ordinances he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were to them God who forgives, though you took vengeance on their deeds. Exalt the Lord your God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Yes. Praise God. This is part of the, this is the two-parter. This is the second part today. I've talked on this subject before. Uh, well, we're back there again. The Bible says to beautify the Lord in holiness. And what that word beautify actually means is to decorate or to ornament. Okay, and so... It has nothing to do with the clothing you have on. It has everything to do with what's coming out of your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. It really does. It really does. Amen. Whoso offers praise, glorify me. That's what the scripture says. Hallelujah. And so when you're praising God, you are literally decorating the holiness of God. You are telling God that you're great, that there's nothing like you. Amen. And I'm telling you, in that kind of an atmosphere, God can do very powerful things because the level of the individual's faith rises as they believe in the God who is holy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, that's not the message this morning, but that's, that's just part of it. So let's pray right now and ask God to give us revelation and understanding this morning in this house. Lord Jesus, again, we come to you. We're grateful and thankful, God, that we can call on you. Oh, God, I am nothing and you are everything, everything. Of myself, I can do nothing. But you strengthen me to do things that I can't believe I've done. Because you strengthened me. It was you, wasn't me. No flesh is going to glory in your presence, Father. None. Oh, God. And so here we are today, your people. 
We give honor and praise to you this morning. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Now, I'm going to expect you to be a little cerebral today. In other words, you're going to have to think. Okay, you just, you can't check out on me. Uh, some of you will, but that's to your detriment, not mine. Amen. And, uh, but you got it. You got to stay with us. All right. Amen. We, we told you last week that, uh, that the basic attribute of God is the fact that he's holy. In fact, in heaven, in chapter 4 of, of Revelation, the angels, the, these creatures are, are saying back and forth, holy, 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 holy. Amen. Now, God has some tremendous attributes, but that attribute of ho being holy is significant because, again, we, the Bible does say that God is a God of love. But, but here's the thing. Your love, my love, has limits. God's love doesn't have limits. Therefore, his love is a holy love. It's beyond what you and I can think. And we could talk about his grace and his long suffering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, our God is unique. Everybody say unique. unique. He is distinct. He's separate from everything and everybody, there is nobody like our God at all. Hallelujah. When I read the very first verse of the Bible, I'm already shook up. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. And I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I, I've, I've meditated on that, and I still haven't figured it all out yet. I just got to leave it in his hands. God, you did that stuff. You made those stars up there, and amen, in the sky. In fact, you know every one of them by name. Yes. Hallelujah. Our God is holy. I, 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 again, I'm going to tell you what I said last week. If you can ever grab a hold of this holy God, it'll change your brain. It'll change how you approach him. It will change how you walk before him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, again, our God is unique, distinct, separate from everything and everybody in other words, we could put it like this. God is divided from everything else. You can't even play in God's part. You, 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 you wouldn't even get on a minor league team in God's part. Because God is holy. So when we talk about biblical holiness, just listen to me. We're going to build here. Uh, being divided from other things in, in the sense that you are different, distinct from other persons or things. You are unique. Everybody say, I'm the unique. I'm unique. Now, you just, just hang out, man. You know, I ain't going to talk fast very often. I may scream a little bit here and there, but I'm not sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the exact opposite word of the word holy in the scripture is the word profane. Everybody say profane. profane. What, what, what profane literally means is simply to be common and ordinary. Hallelujah. That, something that's common and ordinary is profane. Going back to scripture that we used last week, Ezekiel 22 and 26. It said of the priest of Israel, her priests have violated my law and done what? They have profaned my holy things. What have they done with the holy things of God? They just used them for common or ordinary things. They took the holy vessels of the temple and they were taking them to get a drink of water out of the fountain. And that was not their purpose at all. They have not distinguished, it says in the scripture, between the holy and the unholy, nor have they made known the differences between the unclean and the clean, and their eyes, and they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbath so that I am profaned among them. In other words, by their actions, by what they did with what God had made holy, they made God cheap and common. I sure don't want to do that. So this is all from last week. 
Amen. We talked a little bit about the gra graphic manifestations of God and how there was, a, there was one called Lucifer that said, I can be just like you, God. And, and we all know what happened to Lucifer. He, he didn't come just like God. He was a created being. He was a spirit being. He was cast down. Amen. And, he, and he's still playing that game of telling us that we can be just like God. And then there was the Necherib, 721 B.C., the Assyrian king who sent Rabshakeh down there. And Rab Rabshakeh was his voice piece. And, and, he, and his, what he'd say is, hey, we've defeated all these other gods of these other nations. Do you really think your God is any different than all these other gods? And there was an emphatic yes to that because 185,000 Assyrians died in a camp in one night. All because they said, your God is just like all the other gods. Our God is holy. Hallelujah. Oh, he's holy. Hallelujah. When you pick up the word of God, you got to understand what you're reading. You're reading about a holy God. In fact, Paul will tell Timothy in 2 Timothy 3.15 that from your childhood you have known the holy scriptures. Why are the scriptures holy? Because they're unique from any other written material you could ever find. There's nothing like the holy scripture. Why? Because God is the author of the Bible. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh my God, I trust that he would expand our understanding today. I trust that he would just deal with us in this area. We, you got to get a bigger picture of God than you got. You really do. You got to get a bigger picture of God than you got right now. I'm not trying to be ugly. Now just, now let me, let me start today. Now, God is omnipresent, isn't he? Which means that he is everywhere, right? Okay, so he, he's everywhere. So there's nowhere that God is not at, all right? But yet, in the scripture, we're going to read here about some places where God is uniquely present. Where God makes himself known in a unique way. All right? Yeah. Yes. And wherever God makes himself known in a unique way, wherever that may be, it becomes holy. Yeah. Uh, just, just hang out with me, man. I know where I'm going. You may not, but I know where I'm going. And so you'll read in Psalms 20 and verse 6, it says, Now I know the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer from his where? holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. You could ask little Aaliyah back there, hey, where's God? And she'd probably point up. He, he's in heaven. And because God is uniquely in heaven, present uniquely in heaven, made known to us uniquely in heaven, therefore, amen, heaven is holy. I, I, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I want you to think. When, when when Moses is out in the wilderness, and he sees that burning bush. Now he's seen other things burn out there, but this bush is not being consumed. And he stops and he begins to come close to that bush. He hears a voice from that voice say to him, "Do not." Exodus 3 and 5. Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is what? It is holy ground. There's a lot of sand out in the desert. But the ground where you're standing right now, Moses, that is holy ground. Why is that ground holy ground? Because God is uniquely present there at that place. And that place is now holy ground. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We used to sing the song. We don't sing it. We are standing on holy ground. You need to get the concept of what that means, that God is uniquely present there and that God is working there in a very powerful way, and it is holy. 
Praise God. When they, when they built the tabernacle, that blueprint that God gave them in the wilderness, in Exodus chapter 26, in verse number 33, it, it, in the instruction, it, it says, you shall hang the veil from the clasps. Then you shall bring the ark of the testimony in there. Behold the veil. The veil shall be a divider for you between the holy place and what? The most holy place. What made that the most holy place? I'll tell you what made it holy. Because in the most holy was the Ark of the Covenant, which symbolizes the very presence of God. And where God is uniquely present, it is holy. Not only was it like that in the tabernacle, but when Solomon built the temple in 2 Chronicles chapter 3 and verse 8, again, the same design as, as the tabernacle in the wilderness, it says, and he made the most holy place. Why was it the most holy place? Because that's where God's presence uniquely dwelt. I know that. I know where. I, I just want you to think. In Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 12, it tells us, and the Lord will take possession of Judah as in his inheritance in the what? Holy. The holy land. It will ch again choose Jerusalem. What made Judah, what made Jerusalem holy? It's because God's unique presence was there. Again, in, in Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 5, when the devil takes Jesus up onto the, the pinnacle of the temple, the Bible says in verse 5 that he took him up into the holy city. Why was this city holy? Because God was uniquely present in that city. Now, are you with me? I know nobody shout, nobody run the aisles, nobody do none of that stuff. It's okay. I want you all to think. All right. I want you to think. Think. We're not a bunch of, uh, here I'm going, ranting. We're not a bunch of mindless people here. You are educated. You, you know a whole lot about the Bible. You need to apply that thing and you need to think what the word of God is saying. And God needs to give you revelation to understand. So wherever God's presence is uniquely known, it is holy. All right. Now, 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 just now. Now, I, I realize the Bible says that God holds the cattle on a thousand hills. But there are some things that the Bible talks about this holy God, the things that he owns, that they are holy. All right. You just, I know where I'm going. It just, it, it'll get excited just a little bit here. The Bible tells us in Luke 9 and 9, 10, that when Jesus asked, but who say you that I am? Peter's answer was the Christ of God. Or the word Christ there means the Messiah. He's the anointed one. All right. Now, in verse, in Acts chapter 2, that same Peter is preaching in verse 27, and he says, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Why is he the holy one? Because the Messiah is owned or belongs to God. Therefore, he's holy. Are you still with me? Now, we, now, all of us know in this house that there are angels that serve God and angels that don't serve God. There are angels that have fallen angels. But the Bible tells us in Luke 9, 26, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, and of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and his fathers and of what? The holy angels. Why are these angels holy? Because they belong to to God. Amen. And they're holy. I just, just hang out, man. I know where I'm going. Hallelujah. I'm starting to get excited about where I'm going here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 5, amen, Paul speaks about, 
uh, which in other ages has not been made known to the sons of man as it now has been revealed by the spirits to who? To his holy apostles and prophets. The, Paul calls the apostles holy. He calls, in fact, Peter will say in 1st, 2nd Peter chapter 1 and verse 21, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God. Okay, so the prophets were holy and the apostles were holy. I've had people come in here that claim to be apostles that <laughs> it's just best I never talk about them. But I can tell you this, that the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were holy. Why? Because they belong to him and whatever belongs to God is holy. Amen. And the prophets, amen, were holy. Are, are you with me? Are you still here? The Bible tells us in Psalms 103 and verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's with him. He bless his what? His holy name. Now, you know, there's a lot of people that got the name Jesus or Jesus. But nobody, nobody owns that name but God. He's the only one that fulfills that name. And his name is holy. Everybody say his name is holy. Now, you will read in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 9, Amen. It talks, it starts talking about shall we not much readily be in subjection to the Father of Spirits and live? Amen. Now, now who is the Father of Spirits? Well, that who's the originator of all spirits? Well, that happens to be God. Right. Right. God is the originator. He is spirit. Amen. You have spirit dwelling in you. Angels have our spirit. Amen. But he's talking here about this originator of all spirits. And then you'll read in Luke eleven thirteen. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give what? The Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Why does it call it the Holy Spirit? Because that spirit belongs to God. All right, huh? So let me do a, a quick review for you folks. All right. So whatever, wherever God is uniquely present, it's holy. And whatever God owns is holy. All right. Are you still with me? All right. So what's that got to do with me? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk to you about the relationship of God, holiness to us as believers, all right? Now, I don't think I'm going to get any, anybody in disagreement with me here, but the Bible does teach us that those that have been born into this world after Adam and Eve's sin, they're born into, they're fallen, they're sinful, they're, uh, they're, just, they're just plain evil, Right? Anybody want to argue that with me? There have been people that said they've never done wrong. And I want to read to them from 1 John chapter 1. And everyone that says he's never committed sin is a liar. <laughs> I did that to one guy and he didn't like it. <laughs> I'm just reading him the word of God. That's all I was reading. And so I was born into sin, which... Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but makes me profane. Everybody is sinful, which means that you are profane. You are common and ordinary. I don't care if you're if you're American or Russian or Ukrainian or English or Spanish or Whatever, wherever you're from, we all just got this common problem. We're all profane. Nobody had to teach me how to sin. I was lying at my mama when I was Gianni's age. I hope you don't lie to your mama, Gianni. 
Don't answer that, son. Just, just look innocent. Just look innocent. Not, not only was I lying to my mama, and I've told you this, I was stealing out of the church from my dad's office, out of his desk drawer, middle drawer, loose change, candy store, two walks away. Solution, I need money, I don't got a job, but there's, there's change, I'm going to the candy store. And I help myself to my father's change, or at least maybe it was Sunday school money, I don't know. But I can just tell you that I was stealing. Let me, let me, just let me tell you, all you that think you're innocent and perfect, the first time you lied and the first time you stole or did anything, God could have righteously judged you on the spot. Let me put it in terms you may understand. He could have smoked you. But he didn't. Why are we like that? Because we are profane. You know, when you, people, you, you amaze me sometimes. You go to work out there with people that are sinners and you expect them to act like saints. Uh, what, what world are you living in? You know, I, 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 got, I cut my teeth in the factory. Brother Philip in the factory, uh, they, they don't hold nothing back. I, I learned words there that I hadn't learned outside of the factory. I, I, I saw men cheat on their wives. I did. I, I'd see them hugging and kissing their girlfriend, and then they got to where they went out into the, where everybody could see, and all of a sudden they separated from her. And, and then I remember one guy, I, 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 mean, I wanted to hit that guy. I'm sorry, I just, just me bleeding through right now. It's just me bleeding. He, he walks out after he's been kissing his girlfriend, walks out, and he comes to the gate, and here stands his beautiful wife and two small girls. And he just been, he's just been kissing on some woman. And I wanted to, my God, how I wanted to, but I didn't. Why was he like that? Because he was profane. Yes. Uh, don't y'all look at me. And I was, I was standing over here. Listen, I was, I was listening to the gossip of a couple of brothers this morning over there. They were talking about some of the stuff they were doing. You know, how old Jack Daniels, you know, old brother Jack Daniels, you know, get his spirit going on inside of you. You'll really act great when you get his spirit going on inside of you, you know. And, and, and they were talking about them other days. Those other days, gentlemen, you were profane. Oh, come on. You that think you can handle liquor, you know, you act like a fool. Right. This is, man, God, I'm just, I got to rein this thing back in. <laughs> so all people born into sin are common and ordinary. They're profane. Now, now, here, now here, it's, here it starts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First yes. Corinthians chapter 6, yes. verse number 9. The Apostle Paul is writing to a church that they got more issues than you could stake a stick, uh, stick at. Yeah, yeah, they just, they got issues, man. They got stuff going on. And, and not only that, the city they dwell in is extremely sexually immoral city. All right. In fact, it was noted throughout the Roman Empire as that kind of a city. And it's hard to top Rome for what it did. But, but the Corinthians, man, whoo, baby, that was, that was quite a place. And so Paul starts out in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 saying, Do you not, not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? I, I, don't know, I don't know how we miss that. If you're not living righteously, if, you, if you're living sinfully, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. No, it's not just the preacher saying that. That's what the Word of God is saying. Do, in fact, it says, don't be deceived. And then it starts a list of probably the thing. If this is not all the sins that you can commit. It's just the sins that's going on in Corinth. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covets, nor drunkards, or revilers, nor extortions will inherit the kingdom of God. Are you, are you hearing what it says? You practice these sins, baby, you ain't going in. In fact, you are profane. Some places, man, I'd be in trouble right now. 
And all I read is, remember brother, remember brother Dan, we went to that house one day to baptize that guy and we read this very scripture and the sister was there and we had said nothing about her. We had read the scripture and she exploded in anger. She did. Why did she do that? Because she was profane and the scripture had smacked her right between the eyes. All right, all right, all right. Are you still with me? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I, I, I love to, oh, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Verse 11. <laughs> and such were some of you. <laughs> I could probably be said to people in this house right now. And such were some of you. Hallelujah. But you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. What had taken place? I tell you what took place. God divided you from sin when you were born again. Are you hearing me? He divided you from it. Praise God. Such were some of us. But we're watched now. We, we're, we're sanctified. We're, we've been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. We've been born again. Oh, yeah. We've been divided. Oh, hallelujah. Now, just, just hang out with me. In, in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, Peter will tell us, but you are a chosen generation, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. He's saying to the believer, you're a holy nation. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. He divided us from darkness. He called us out of darkness. He called us into light. He did that. You didn't do that. He did that. All right, all right, all right, all right. And so Paul puts it like this in Colossians 1 and 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us, or as it says in the King James, translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Now, now, you got to get what I'm saying here right now. God moved you from being profane to being holy. Let me, let me now tell you something. You did not make yourself holy. God made you holy. God divided you from sin. God's the one that stepped in and says, you're no longer going to be a child of darkness. You are now going to be a child of light. And he carried you from one place to another place. In other words, what he's done for us, he has given us a position in Jesus Christ. I'm holy, ladies and gentlemen. Not because I made myself holy. And I'll come back to that in a little bit here. I'm holy because he made me holy. Because he took me out of darkness and put me in it. And the problem we have sometimes, we think we made ourselves holy, and you never made yourself holy. You can't make yourself holy. Only God can make you holy. I know that won't splash in some circles. But that's all right. It's splashing where I'm at. Now, now, in 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, it will use the phrase, called to be saints. 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, called to be saints. Thank you. thought I lost somebody up there. He's up there dancing around, running up and down the, aisle, the, the stair there. Called to be saints. In 2 Corinthians 1 and 1, it says, with all the saints. 2 Corinthians 1 and 1, with all the saints. Amen. 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 Did I not give you those, son? Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry that I won't, I won't beat you up anymore. <laughs> Ephesians 1 and 1. 
it says to the saints. All right, now, are you ready for this? Now, are both your sons in Tebow? I'm sorry? Oh, you're, you're a, you, you, graduate, you graduated to, now you're out of T-ball and now you're into, yeah. Kind of the real stuff. <laughs> kind of. Now, I, I want to illustrate it to you. Using, okay, when using T-ball, are you a baseball player? Well, let, let, uh, well that, that's all that matter. We don't care what you think. <laughs> are you a baseball player? Of course we are. I mean, they got to set the ball on a tee, and then you take a whack at it. Sometimes you miss. Sometimes you don't even run to first. You don't even know where to run. But you are a baseball player. Are you a baseball player if you're in the majors? Of course you are. Now, I, some churches' theology say you got to do special things to be saints. And that, that you have to actually, you actually basically almost have to get anointed to be a saint. You got, you got to go through some procedures to be saints. I have just read, we have just read in Corinthians and Ephesians where it calls those people, those believers in those cities, it calls them saints. Do you know what saint means? The most holy thing. Now I know, I know brother, brother Gene don't want to call something a baseball player because they just ain't got it right yet. Now, he, now he, would, he would not argue the point of a major league ball player. He'd say, oh, yeah, he's a baseball player. Now, now, hear me. When God makes you holy, you're holy even if you're just T-ball. You understand? You're holy if you're just T-ball. You are. You are. Some people have issues with that. In other words, you don't expect out of a t-ball player what you expect out of a professional baseball player with an uh, absurd salary who should never, ever drop a fly. <laughs> That's what you expected in t-ball. I know I'm, a, I'm an angry fan right now. <laughs> All right, all right, now, now. So what I'm telling you right now, you don't make yourself holy. Right. Now, you may not be ready for this. We'll, we'll get into it. You can't make yourself more holy. Right, right, right. I know I'm right, brother. <laughs> but it is a tough one, especially in apostolic circles. And I'm apostolic. Now you, I, I guarantee you, well, I can't guarantee you, but I'm sure there's some boys out there going to play Major League Baseball today that they started in T-ball. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So the definition of being holy does not merit what you say. It merits what God says. God divided you. God made you holy. You have never made yourself holy one time. This is where self-righteousness comes steeping in, bleeds in, where somehow we think we're better than somebody else. And, and Jesus would tell us that people that are self-righteous, they despise others. And, we, and God, you know what? If, if that critical spirit's in the house, it needs to go. May I say if that critical, critical spirit's in the house right now, that is not holy. All right, all right. All right, I've done enough now. 
So, so what, what God calls holy or makes holy, it's a position. Everybody say a position. position. All right. Now, now you, you thought we just were just filling in space here. Where God is uniquely present is holy. Yes. And what God owns is holy. Yes. Yes. All right? So, 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 it tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. Are, are you still with me here? I get so lost and I'm not even looking at the time. Okay, here's what it says. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse number 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Where God makes himself uniquely present, it is holy. You didn't get there by yourself. You didn't get there. He put you there. He filled you with his spirit. And again, let me say where God is uniquely present, it is holy. Now, now, now. It doesn't stop there. Whom you have from God. And then the next thing it says is in verse number 19, you are not your own. Do you remember what we've been talking about already this morning? What God owns is holy. For you are brought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I'm holy today. Not on something that I did, but on him. His spirit uniquely dwells in this body of flesh. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, he owns this boy. Now, sometime the boy has a problem understanding that God owns him. But God owns me. And therefore, because he's uniquely present and what he owns, it's all holy. So I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we are holy this morning. Yes. Yes. All right. Now. Now the rubber's going to hit the road. Right. All, right. All right. And so Peter, you know what? I can tell it's getting heated up because I'm getting heated up. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Woo. All right. So Peter writes to us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. He says, and as obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. No, no. No, we need to wade through this because people have misused this scripture. First of all, he made me holy. And being made holy, it's a position that God has put me in. He translated me from darkness to light, okay? Now, 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 now. Here it comes. You also be holy in all your what? Your conduct. Everybody say conduct. My conduct is my practice. Everybody say practice. You know, you know, what, what, what do you say? I'm, I'm just going to chew on this a little bit. What do you say to the guy that just walked in that knows nothing about being what God wants him to be, gets the Holy Ghost today, and gets, gets baptized, and he has his sins all washed away, and he don't know how to dress, and he don't know how to practice living for God. Are you going to tell me then he's not holy? Come on. Is that what you're going to tell me? That he's not holy? Jesus. But that's what some believers have done. We, we've had them get baptized and walk out into the lobby. And somebody tries to clean them up out there. 
And, and this is just, this is Mark now. You, you want to clean him up? I want to clean you up. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm talking street language. I want to clean your clock. <laughs> You, you, you got to understand this thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is where we become like the Pharisees who stood on the street corners and prayed. And ladies and gentlemen, they did more fasting than you and I do. They fasted twice a week. And Jesus said, if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will be lost. Oh, Jesus. All right. That's why we got to get away from this performance stuff. You really do. You got to get away from that. Because somehow you think that you've made yourself privileged in the kingdom of God because you did this and you did that. It doesn't work like that. Now, again, I'm not attacking fasting. I'm not attacking that at all. I'm just telling you, you got to have the right attitude when you fast. All right. So, so the, the Bible commands the believer to be holy. How? It's not our position. It's our practice. All right. Because it is written, be holy, verse 16, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct, everybody say conduct, yeah. yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear. Uh, are you hearing me? Our problem is the practice. God made me holy. I can't get more holy. I know this for some people, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just stretched it out there. I'm into false doctrine and everything else I can think of, but but I'm not. Right. 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 Hallelujah. So we say, uh, how can I be holy like God? God is holy. I mean, I, after all, I've still got to deal with the sinful nature. Anybody here not have to deal with the sinful nature? If you ask him that question, how can I be holy like God is holy? Okay. Just, you need to take that, script, that question out of your mind. You have a position of being holy. Why? Because God made you holy. All right. One of my favorite verses, a real small verse, Psalms 103, 14, almost, pretty much almost every Bible study I get into it. He remembers that I'm dust. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know where you got me from. I was just a mud ball. I was a mess, and God, I'm still a mess. And God, I want to practice what you are, God. I really do. I want to practice. Everybody say practice. Being distinct and unique because God made me distinct and unique. I don't want to be offensive to God and involve myself in the world of sin, which, are you ready for this? Hates my God. If you really think this world of sin loves God, what planet are you living on? It hates God. And why would I want to do anything that the world of sin is doing, which hates God. I have been made different, unique, distinct by a holy God. All right, all right. Now, would you agree with me that we're his children? Are we his children? Yeah, we. Well, just as my father, his nature is holy. He expects us his children to reflect his nature. Yeah, right. Are, are, have, have, I, have I lost a lot of you over the top of your head somewhere else? Are, are you still with me? All right. All right, here, here it comes, here it comes. Let's do a heart check this morning. Everybody say we're going to do a heart check. 
We're all gonna we're all gonna listen to your heart, see if it's beating right, make sure it's getting you know, I I, I actually have an aneurysm in, in my aorta. Okay. Did, did, I did, I've never told you that. Uh, and, and that thing could blow any time it wanted to. You, you know, an aneurysm is like, you, you ever had a bicycle that's got an inner tube with bulge in it? That, that's like an aneurysm. All right. And, and I got one. <laughs> and, and, and the doctor, when I talked to him, he, he just, all he told me is, we just got to keep your blood pressure low, brother. That's all we got to do. You know, you ever, you ever had a, a garden hose that, that you, you, you turn the pressure on full blast and it's got an issue and you all of a sudden you got the bubble popping up here. That thing's fixing to break. So I just got to keep my blood pressure right. So you better not mess with me. <laughs> I may drop dead right in front of you. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, come on. Life is short. I'm not going to eat my fingers to my knuckles because I got some health issues. All right? Many of the things I deal with are because I'm fat. Well, ain't that the truth? Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you call me behind my back. <laughs> I got health issues, all right? I sure don't want to have a heart issue with God, though. I, I'm trying to rein back and come back. I, I was chasing a squirrel. I don't even know where I was at, but I was chasing. I hit him up tree in the top of the tree. But now, so, so we're doing a heart check here right now. Heart check. Uh, okay, you know, you need to listen to what I'm going to say. What statement am I making with clothes I wear? What statement am I making? What statement am I making? Remember, I'm holy. He has made me holy. That's my position. That's where he's put me. And now he tells me to practice what he's made me. So what statements am I making with the clothes I wear? You know, some guys got really bad problems with lust. And, and, and you got to get a hold of it, gentlemen. Especially during this time of the year. Because yeah. the hotter it gets, the more they take off. Yeah. Right. And now it's just a cotton swab. <laughs> Three of them, in fact. I'm sorry, man. I'm just blunt. So I'm talking to lady... Ladies and men right now, what kind of statements are you making with the clothes that you wear? Now let me ask you, heart check, heart check. Does my clothing satisfy me or does it please God? Does it satisfy me or am I trying to please God? Heart check, heart check. By the way, I just, I had a thought come to me and sometimes I chase them. I, I've seen some of your Facebook pages, especially you women. And the picture you got up there that you display on Facebook, that ain't the person I see in church. <laughs> the, the, the person you display on your Facebook page is a sensual person, a seductive person. Thank you, brother. Hang out with me, man. Oh, come on. I, 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 I don't go on Facebook, but I have, if, if you have any connection, I, I see them. I see them. I see your pictures. I, I don't know how you do it, because that's sure ain't how you look when you come to church. Heart check today. Heart check. Are you still in the house? Have I lost you all? Is what I wear a reflection of the Word of God? 
Is it a reflection of self-control and appropriate attire? Or do I identify with the pulp popular culture in the way that I dress. Oh, what? You know? Oh, <laughs> you kids think you're just being unique. I, I come from the wide tie generation and the, and the bell-bottom pants. <laughs> That's the dinner, ace, and I, yeah. And I look back and say, oh, my God, did I look dorky. <laughs> 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 and, you know, why, okay, I mean, I'm, I'm the preacher here, so I can say things, get away with things, maybe not with you, but I'll be all right with him. Why in the world would you discolor your hair? Oh, Jesus. What, 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 what cartoon is it that got the blue, what, what is blue, what? There's a cartoon that's, they're, they're all blue. Oh, uh, what, what are you, trying to be a Smurf? <laughs> why, why would you do that stuff are you, are you not satisfied with the color that God gave you because you sure didn't get that hair on your own do, are, are my standards of dress in my selecting of clothes is it society's standards or is it biblical standards? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. This, okay. I, I'm talking to you right now. Uh, I tell you right now, I'm not a clothesline preacher. I've never been a clothesline preacher. But if you come to me and want to talk to me, I'll, I'll talk to you. But if you can't get this stuff right that we're talking about today, I'm not wasting my time with you. Okay, okay, now the next thing I'm going to talk. You know, some people think it's all about dress. All right? But what's, what's the number one philosophy of my world? What's the number one philosophy of my world? I'm number one. I exist for my own benefit. Do you really think that that's a holy philosophy especially when you read in the scripture that the very one who created us when he was robed in flesh washed the feet of his disciples and told us you know you need to do these things you need to be an example of what I he played the role of a servant the reason it's 80 20 and Tony because a lot of people they don't want to be a servant brother they want to be served. That's the philosophy of my world. Come on, some of you have dealt with it. You've been confronted with that person. The only thinks about, you know, he'll walk all over you to get to the top of your, whatever you, your industry you're involved in. But as a child of God, I'm not number one. God is. I exist for the honor of God and to serve him and others. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Now, I just, I'm just, I'm going to tell you right now, people that struggle with mental health, you, you'll notice something about them, ladies and gentlemen. It's all about them. Yeah. Right. Everything is about them. Right. If they could learn that it's supposed to be about Jesus and serving I, I, I suspect that a lot of the issues they got going on would melt away. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Some, some years, many years ago, in fact, uh, I'm actually coming to a close. Many years ago, uh, we, were, uh, we were doing a recording. Not me. My, my, my father had retired, and the, and the church was putting together a recording, and we were doing it in another apostolic church somewhere else. All right. And uh, the reason we were doing that is because, because the grandson of the pastor and his wife, uh, he, he went to that church and he was more familiar with their equipment and they could do a much better job recording. Okay, just, just hang out with me. Hang out with me. 
All right. Because I know where I'm going. And so my wife and I, we'd been out to eat lunch, and we, we came in a little later than everybody else on this Sunday afternoon. And, and I met the pastor's wife. She was standing out by the door. And I, I said to her, I want to thank you, sister, for let us, letting us come in and, and use your building today. Now, this, this woman, when you saw her, she, she had her sleeve right, she had her skirt right, she was wearing woman's clothing, she had everything right, except for one thing. She had the spirit of a snake. All right? She had the spirit of a snake. Yet, yet she would have considered herself holy. She had made the people that were from this church they had to get off of their platform. She didn't want them up there because we just simply didn't measure up to what they wanted on their platform, you know? And, and, and so they had to get down. And she had so exhibited a nature of hatred and criticalness and that, that it was just, it was offensive. And yet she would have considered herself holy in her practice. She was far from being holy in her practice. She had her clothing right, but her spirit stunk. And that is the problem that you have among Pentecostal ranks today. As long as you look right on the outside, you're classified as being all right. All right, I know where I'm going, man. My son attended Bible school. And had a teacher, wonderful teacher. And uh, th this teacher told them the story of a, a young lady that had left the church and was living with a guy, not married to him, living with a guy. And, and she was still wearing dresses and still had not cut her hair, all right? And, and, and the comment was made, thank God she has not lost her holiness. Okay, okay. That's a rather confused person to think that. Because the practices that were going on were not taking her to where God wanted her to be. They were not reflecting what God had done in her life. The position of being holy may have been right, but the practice was anything but holy. Now, now. So, for all you people that check everybody out, all right, I'm, I'm coming down your street right now. Right. Hallelujah. My actions and my inner attitudes have to be different than the profane world that I live in. Right. We should be the most friendly, loving people that you could ever come in contact with. All right? Was, was it all right this morning? Did you know? Was it okay? with people nice to you? Very nice. That's how we're supposed to be. Yeah. We're supposed to be like that. So, so Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. He says, therefore, and I, and I, ladies and gentlemen, I am coming home. Therefore, my wife said, I said that last week. It was a half an hour before I landed. <laughs> big plane, man, big plane. I needed all the runway I could get. <laughs> therefore, come out from among them and be separate. This is what Paul said. Says the Lord, do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you. You should be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, verse 1 of chapter 7, therefore, having these promises, what promise? That I'm his child and that he's made me holy. And as long as I stay with my daddy, I'm going to be all right. 
Therefore, having these precious promises, beloved, look what it says next. Let us cleanse ourselves. Everybody say, let us cleanse ourselves. <laughs> there are some things, ladies and gentlemen, God's not going to cleanse in your life. You got to do some washing. You do. You got to work on them practices. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Are you still with me? I'm going really, really slow here. It's up to you. It's up to me to cleanse myself from the filthiness of my flesh and my spirit. Do you understand your spirit is so important? Do you understand people read your spirit? We all have that ability to read the spirit of somebody else, some to a greater degree than others, but we can read the spirit. We see it on their face. We see, we see the ugliness that somehow seeps out. And I'm telling us, ladies and gentlemen, today, we need to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of our flesh and our spirit. We need to do that. Why? Why? Because we need to practice what God has made us. And then it goes on, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I, I, I'm back to T-ball right now. <laughs> you don't expect out of a T-ball player what you expect out of a major league player. Right. But if that boy keeps playing T-ball, he's going to graduate to the coach pitching and then, the po the, then if he's going to pound that ball, and that coach is going to say, man, i got to get somebody who's got a better arm than mine. Because this, this kid can see that ball coming. He sees how it's spinning. You know, he's picking up on all that stuff, and he's whacking the fire out of that thing. You know. And it, yeah. <laughs> Does he stand behind a cage? <laughs> I bet you if you were pitching to a major league baseball player, you'd stand behind a cage. <laughs> the only thing that would be exposed would be your arm when you threw that ball towards the plate. Because <laughs> Mo, those boys can scald that ball and it can come right back at you so fast. Now, now, the point, the point, the point. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. What God made me, where he placed me, he made me holy. It's up to me now to practice what God made me. And by practicing what God made me, I develop. I ain't got time to get into what Paul talked about, vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. But if you were to read that back in Timothy... It's you got to cleanse yourself. Yeah. You got to do it. Nobody else. Now, as a pastor, I don't ride you. I don't beat you up. But I'll be frank with you. I don't like some of your clothing. If you want to know the truth, all right. I, I don't think some of your clothing is reflecting the God that we serve. I think it's reflecting this world. All right? Now, I'm not being ugly. I'm not trying to attack you. I'm just telling you. And I, I don't, on a Sunday morning, most of the people here today, they, they've been in church. They know about being born again. They know all those things. But when I have visitors come in that don't know God at all, I am not going to park in Deuteronomy 22.5 or or Corinthians 11, or Timothy, where Paul talks to him about, well, I won't even go there today. I'm not going to park there. Because I want that person to come to know Jesus. I want to introduce them to Jesus. And it's going to sound ugly. I know it's going to sound ugly. I'm not wanting to introduce them to a standard of dress. 
I want to introduce them to Jesus. Yes. Now, some of you you, 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 you don't even understand what I'm saying right now. You've, you're missing what I'm saying, and I know it. I know it. So we're, we're closing right now. We're closing. So it's up to me to cleanse myself of my spirit and attitude. And my God, you, some of us can get so angry in this house, so angry. And we start lashing out at other people around us. Do you really think that's not filthiness of the spirit? Some of us are, we just, we, we cut people down. We, we, we slay them with the sword of our mouth. Help us, God. I want to reflect Jesus. I, 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 let's stand. I, I just, I, I just got to stop. Janelle, this is your first service with us, sister. You just, and I told your husband, you know, I'm going to be talking about holiness this morning, brother. <laughs> so, so, so he made me holy. You can't take that away from me. He made me holy. He made me unique, distinct, separate from everything and everybody. Hey, Brother Antonio, I am different than a whole lot of other people in this world. I am. I am. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. And he's taking this old boy and he's worked in him and he's going to continue to work in him. He's not done with me. It's up to me to practice what he's made me. This holy God that we serve, this God that's unique and distinct, separate from everything and everybody. Amen. Are, are you hearing me, ladies and gentlemen? Are you hearing me? Now, I, I, I got to tell you, this, this is not original with me. I did not hear this, this stuff I'm talking to you about today in Pentecostal ranks. I heard them in a conference for evangelicals. And I listened to the preacher lay this stuff out, and I wept. It, it, it changed how I thought. All right, now, now, at the end of his message, this was a large audience of ministers. At the end of his message, he made a plea to them to come back to practicing holiness. He made a plea to them. And he, and he made this statement that the churches that have power with God are the churches that are practicing what God made them. You want your kiddo saved? Our music is not going to be able to measure up to what music they can, he they can get in our city. We're not a large congregation. We're not going to measure up to what they can see on TV and all the games they can get involved in we don't have the technical abilities to put on some kind of big old fancy thing to draw people. But what we do have is the power of God. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you, it's no orchestrated choir, singers, musicians, they're going to save anybody. That's right. It's going to be the word of God Amen. and the power of God. Amen. That's going to, can we just bow our heads in this room? Can we just bow our heads this morning in this room? Can we bow our heads? Let's just talk to Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus, to live up to what I preached this morning. Help me. I preached a long time again today, God. I just can't seem to get away from that. Help me, Jesus. Help me. Help me, God. Help me. Help me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, 